Hi everyone! Uh, that time of year, Nationals, um, I'm so excited for U.S. Nationals. Uh, starts in a couple of days, so that's really exciting. This little one is just going to squirm around and stuff like that the whole time. But um, I made some notes of stuff that I wanted to cover so that way I wouldn't forget anything. Um, yeah. So I will start with the men. The, we're talking about Canadian Nationals should be in the title. Yeah. Um, we'll start with the men. First off, Patrick Chan. Wow. Um, usually, no offense to like, no offense to Canadians, anything like that. In general, as a whole, I always feel like Canadian Nationals, their scores are just a bit inflated. I usually feel that way. And I tend to feel that way also um, with U.S. Nationals. As far as, not, I don't feel that everyone's scores are inflated, but more that the people that the USFSA really like, <laughs> I feel like their scores tend to be a little inflated. Um, but with Patrick Chan, I honestly have to say, there, I really don't feel like there was that much inflation. Like, honestly, you know, the score is really high. It's obviously a record-breaking score and stuff like that. Um, but maybe just a little bit, but because he did have some errors in his free program, um, but still, the, both programs are just great programs, and he has the quads in there, and they're just really good. Um, as far as the short program went, I thought it went really, really well. I think it's a cute program. I like it a lot. Um, his free program, I'm kind of excited for him about that because he did not do a perfect program there, so he definitely is still improving and has room for improvement and got a really, you know, high score for this whole competition. <laughs> um, but I think that's good for him because I think he'll just continue um, to improve and make that program better. As far as, like, his music, Toward the end, I really felt like he very much got in to the music and really felt the music. It's hard for me to judge that program with, like, no, like, standard in mind because the first thing I think of whenever I hear that music is Michelle Kwan and how beautiful and amazing and just heartfelt that program was. I mean, all of Michelle's programs, I feel like, she was making the music happen, like her body movements and it was just coming straight out from her soul is what it felt like to me, like just her movements and everything created what was the music. And um, I thought he started to feel the music, you know, whenever it picked up um, at the end and really started getting powerful. Um, toward the beginning though, it felt like, it felt to me like Patrick was skating great technically and that Lori Nichol was a great choreographer and she had all, he did all the like artistic movements perfectly and stuff like that. It just looked on his face like he was thinking, okay, this element done, check, this element done, check, arm movement here, check. Like it felt like in his expression that's what was going on. So it was, it just didn't feel like he was feeling the music at the beginning. To me, it didn't feel that way. Um, but toward the end, it really felt like he definitely got more into the music and stuff like that. And that's whenever I really started enjoying his program the most. Um, but it's a, wow, I mean, skating has changed so much. And the fact that that program is so insanely difficult, all the connecting footwork, and there's like never really a resting moment in his program. It it's just so intense and all the time like but it's soft and like I'm not saying like it's intense like it's a you know like crazy program but like it's soft but the program is very demanding and it's just so impressive you know <laughs> because I mean like I said even the linking like footwork from one element to the next is still difficult it's not just like stroking around and stuff like that like it was you know years ago so I was very impressed with Patrick Chan. Um, I can't say that I'm always a fan of his skating. Um, some programs I like, some I don't. Uh, but I really, I really like both of these. I, 
I don't know, whenever it comes to male skaters, I tend to like the skaters that are more um, masculine in their presentation, I guess. Like, they still, you, they still have artistry and, like, are lyrical, but it's just presented in a very masculine way. I don't really know how to say that any better, but I was so happy with him. 302.14, that is an amazing score. I really hope he does well at Worlds this year, and yeah. So the women, um, Canada just really doesn't have a female skater right now. Um, Emily, is that how you say her first name? Emily Lacoste, um, she won the, the event with a 159.51. Uh, she was, like, pretty far down <laughs> in the short program, but, uh, well, I say pretty far down. She was second, but, like, as far as points go, she was, uh, four-ish points behind, I think. Um, and then Cynthia Phaneuf, yeah, I don't know how to say these names, <laughs> um, but she managed to pull off good long program. She apparently did not have a very good short program. I didn't get to watch her program. Um, I didn't get to watch any of the women's programs except for Cynthia's. I got to watch her free skate but not her short. So I don't really know where to go from that. I think Cynthia did okay. I think she's um, the one everyone was looking to be, like, you know, the next Joanny Rochette. Um, I don't know, though. I saw that her coach is now Brian Orser, so that's probably pretty good for her. Um, but yeah, I don't really know anything about the Canadian ladies, so let me know when it comes to that. Uh, Caitlin Osmond, though, apparently had a really great short program. Uh, she was leading it afterward. I would imagine she's probably just young and let the long program pressure get to her, or maybe she's just a short program skater. I don't really know what happened there. Um, but yeah, also back to the men, Kevin Reynolds, um, I got to watch his long program, and he is a little jumper. How old is he? He looks like a little kid. Like, I don't know, maybe he's older, but he just looks so young to me. Um, apparently he didn't have a very, I don't know. I had heard that he didn't have a good short program. Maybe he did. I don't really remember, because I didn't get to watch the short program. I only got to see what his free program, but... Um, and then Jeremy Ten got third for the men. Where did this come from? This kid, like, usually gets, like, tenth, doesn't he? I was super impressed. I mean, he was way far behind as far as scoring goes. Like, the Canadian men, Patrick Chan's, like, way up there at the top, and then Kevin Reynolds is, like, 30 points below him, and then, or maybe more, no. It was way more than 30 points below him. Um, so really... As far as men's go for Canadian, Patrick Chan is it. Um, on to pairs. Megan Duhamel, I don't know how you say it, but her last name, and Eric Radford uh, won the event with 190.11. Didn't get to watch either of their programs. Um, so, yeah, I'm just assuming that they did well on both of them. The one I really want to talk about is Jessica Dubay and Sebastian Wolf. I really did not, did not expect this from them. Um, I'm actually really impressed. I, I wouldn't say I have a love-hate relationship with Jessica Dubé. I absolutely love Jessica Dubé. I get really frustrated with her because I feel like she wants to be good, but she wants to be good in her comfort zone. I could be totally wrong. I do not know her. I am nowhere near her. I don't watch her train. I don't, you know, I don't do any of that. But just outsider's perspective, things that people have written, um, just things that you see on your own, the way certain things have gone down, it just seems like Jessica wants to be good, but she wants to be good inside her little bubble. And I feel like that might be what broke up her and Bryce. Um, I feel like Bryce very much 